The most asked question in the world is how to exit Vim. It is. I'm going to show you seven, six easy ways to kill Vim. The best ways to kill Vim and the worst ways. Every ways to kill Vim. Let's look at how we can kill Vim. Mm. Number one. This file is a Vim file. It's a play I've been working on. And step one is just background the process. Press Control Z to do that. There. It's gone. Vim is stopped. Number one and aha. Vim is still existing though, as in the backgrounded process. We can check this with jobs. Jobs dash L, jobs dash list tells us our jobs. Job number one. This is the process ID. It's Vim X, because that's what Vim I use, and it's not actually Vim. Play.txt, which is the file. Right. We can actually bring this job back to the foreground if we wanted to. Don't know why we would, because we want to exit it, but just to show you, we can go FG and then one. There we go, it's back in the foreground now. Background that crap again, we don't want it. Jobs just I'll just show you it's there again. There it is, right, stopped now. Actually, it's job suspended, not sent to the background, but whatever. Now, if we want to kill this, we can go kill percent one. Kill the first job. Bang. Says it's stopped. Oh no, it doesn't seem to be doing it. We need to absolutely kill it. Kill just sends a sig term which is basically like trying to click end task on the Windows Task Manager. It never works. We want to use kill-9, which basically says, it says, kernel, slay that process. This is me stabbing a process. You want, you want shank? I'll shank your blood. It shanks the process. Kill-9, boom, killed. Can we foreground it? Foreground one, no. Bash, foreground one, no such job. Jobs, dash L. It's gone, it's dead. You have exited them. Num, num. Ugh. No, 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 number two. Open up our file again. We can just kill the process anyway. We don't need to control Z and jobs it and then, then kill it. Ah, that's too hard, man. Why would we ever do that? Instead, we're gonna open a new terminal, make it bigger so you can see it, and then PSOX grep vim. Make it smaller again. Ah, <laughs> move it downwards. <laughs> PSOX grep vim. There we are. We've got the, the script, believe it or not, these videos are scripted. And we've got the uh, the play.txt file here, which is the one open. Then we can just go kill the process ID. Enter. It's finished. Caught deadly signal term. Vim. It's finished. Dominated. We've terminated Vim. Cool. Vim is now exited. Another way to exit Vim. Um, number three. We can kill the process inside of Vim. Open up Vim. Complicated one here. You can execute external commands with Vim. So we can go kill and then the file name. That doesn't work because we're trying to kill play.txt. So we need to find the process ID of play.txt. And how do we do that? We do it like this here. You see? All right, make this bigger. This is saying look for play.txt, psorx, same thing. We, we put psorx, right? You understand how that works. And then we, we cut it. So we use the Unix utility cut to split the output by. Uh, let me show you the output without that. We use the Unix utility cut to split it by spaces, and this is space number one. This is space seven spaces here, so we want the eighth one. So dash field eight. So we copy that, and if you look, we can use bash to assign this to a variable or operate on it. So let's just assign it to a variable here. Uh, meme equals, right, like this. And then echo meme, and you can see it gives us our process ID. Cool, right, okay. And we can operate on that if we wanted to. So we can kill, and then let's put this in uh, a bash to do what's it. There we are. Kill the thing from inside of them. We're killing itself. It didn't work. No such process. Whatever. I find just putting a dash nine here. Terminates it anyway. <laughs> no such process. Bam! Kills it anyway. Who cares? Right. That's how you get them to kill itself or exit itself if we want to be. Nicer. Number five. Or four. Right, uh, let's open them again. All right, all right, we know the score by now. Just close the terminal. There is still a process running in this terminal. Closing the terminal will kill it. Fine, we'll do that, but let's first make a change first. Fin, not fin. We made a change. Wait, no, I don't want to write it. Not fin. We made a change. Let's just kill this terminal anyway. Close it. It's gone. And Vim's exited it. But let's open up that file again. Whoa, what is this? Oh, it found the swap file. What? Yeah, I would like this swap file back. And then you can say recover, enter. And look, 
even though we didn't save that change, Vim is smart enough to save it for us. So that's how you exit and save. You've got to close the terminal to exit and save Vim. Let's do a boring way now. This is the noob way of exiting Vim. You type htop in, or just top if you don't like colors. You then search for the file you're editing on. Play dot tap. You see? I just press slash, slash, slash. Different place on your keyboard because you're American. I press slash to search for it. We find it. And then we can go kill look F9. Default, as I said before, is a, a sig term. We don't want that. We want to sig kill. Always sig kill. You never go wrong. Enter. Bam! Command completed. Vimex. It's gone. Kill den. It's even messed up my turn a little bit. Wow, look, the color scheme is different. Here's another pro tip. Reset. Reset your terminal. Look, terminal's fine. Number seven. Uh, I didn't want to do this way, honestly. Let's open the file again. We got a swap file because we killed it. Let's, re let's recover that bad boy. There we are. Um, delete your swap files after you use them. This is what the noobs do. When you're new to Vim, you kill it this way. You type this, and then you press W to write your file. You save it. You don't even recover it from a swap file. So what's the point of having swap files, right? So that saves it. Then you can just type Q. Ugh, that is so boring. Okay, let's delete our swap files because we don't need it anymore. Delete your swap files and press D. You can even chain those two commands together. WQ. Ugh. It's just so easy. As you know, easy is not the open source way. You want to know an easy way? Easy way? Huh, it's gone. Or, shift, sad, sad. These ways are too easy. I don't like them. My favorite way is closing the terminal, recovering the swap files. It works all the time. If you're on a remote server, kill your SSH session. There we go. That's how you exit Vim. Uh, in case you were wondering about my shirt today, I bought it just for this video. Um, it's too expensive, so I've left the tags on and I'm going to return it. Bye.